Hey guys, it's Larry Greenberg, and today we're going to take a look at the Ozobot. These are described as the world's smallest smart robots. I had a chance to see them up at a trade show in New York, and they recently showed up for review. Now, they come two ways. You can buy one Ozobot for $49.99, and they do come in two colors, white or black. Uh, or you can buy the two-pack, which is what I was sent, and those um, that'll cost you $99. So inside here, you get a, actually a lot of stuff, which I want to show you. Um, let me get all this kind of packaging out of the way. There are some stickers. There are some instructions, and probably more importantly, there is a calibration card somewhere in here, right here. You do have to calibrate the Ozobots uh, based on what surface you plan to place them on. And I'll talk about all the different surfaces that you can place them on in a second. And then let's see, I'm gonna have to tilt this over to get some of the other stuff out. There is a pre kind of laid out track, which of course I'm gonna show you. And then a bunch of other stuff inside here, and I won't take it all out, but essentially what you get is, you get some skins that you can place over the Ozobots. They're kind of like helmets if you wanna change up the color or look of them. Each one comes in its own or with its own carrying case, so you can protect it while you're traveling around. And you can see there are other skins inside those as well. So if I take this out, there's another one in here. We'll take this and put it on the Ozobot like so. And you have to just line up obviously the ports and whatnot. And there you go, now I've got the white one all set. And then you've got the charging cables. These are the micro USB cables that come with it. You'll plug it in right here and into an available USB port on your computer. And once you've got them charging, there's a little LED in there that will blink different statuses to let you know, um, you know that it's working. So uh, it'll blink red and green, letting you know it's charging. It'll blink uh, or stay solid green when it's fully charged, etc. So there's a lot you can do with the Ozobots. And essentially how the Ozobots work is, and I'm unfolding the card that comes with it, is they follow colors and colors and combinations of colors tell the Ozobot to do different things. So basically it will follow a straight line of color until it sees a combination of colors and the combination of colors tells the Ozobot to do something else. And if you look on these, these are the cards that come with it. Here are some of the colored codes that instruct the Ozobot uh, what to do. So you can see there's a red line with a black dot to tell it to go fast or slow, a blue dot, a blue line with a black dot to tell it to go fast, left, right, U-turn, etc. And you can create your own tracks, which I'll show you in a second. But basically, this card will demo how it works. And there's a power switch on here that you press, and that turns it on, as you can see. And then you simply place it down on the board and watch it go. And it will follow, kind of like I said, the pre-programmed commands that are on this board just to show you kind of what it will do. It works remarkably well. It's pretty amazing if I pick it up and stop it. Now, um, where it starts to get really fun is, like I said, you can customize your own track. So um, I have some markers here and you want to obviously have the markers that match up to the colors of, of the commands. But basically, you know, I can take this black marker and I found that you, you kind of have to draw a pretty thick line for it to work properly but once you have that going you can kind of make it do its own thing and it will follow the path that you create for it and you can throw in all kinds of turns if you want so i'm just going to quickly demonstrate this without any turns and then we'll go for more advanced stuff in a second but basically that should be thick enough for it to follow and then simply turn it on like so Place it down and watch it follow the line. Now, right now it's going slow, but of course there are commands for it to go faster, for it to turn, for it to go left, for it to go right. So didn't like that one command that I just had, so I'll pull it off. And that's kind of the cool thing about it is you can adjust the path um, that it takes uh, when you're drawing. You can correct it if it's not properly, you know, aligned along the track. So let's see if it if that's better. Um, so the, the drawing aspect, not quite sure, eh, didn't really like that path. Let's try it from the other way. So um, you can draw, like I said, these, you know, uh, to your heart's content, but it also comes with these cards. Now these are kind of like brain teasers. Now um, these here are sort of pre-programmed tracks that are missing certain elements and you're meant to draw in 
the codes where you think they should go to get the Ozobot from one thing to the other, as you can see. All right, so that's kind of all the paper stuff, but what I really enjoyed was the iPad app. So if you open that up, I'm gonna get into my iPad here. You can download the Ozobot app from the App Store and really have fun. So in the app, there are several different things you can do. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate your Ozobot again for the app. Uh, but basically, you've got three different things that you can do um, in here. There are free draw. So here, you just have a piece of paper and you can choose colors and draw a track. And again, you can add in things like making it go faster and you can actually rotate this to line it up. So now if I put him down, he should follow this track pretty good. And you can see when he gets to the blue line, he will hopefully speed up and go a little bit faster. Um, didn't really speed up that time. And there are more things. So in here as well, there is Playground, which shows you some predetermined tracks if you want them to follow some predetermined ones. And again, you can put your own things in here. So there's a track. Let's see if I want them to go fast through the straightaways. I can put those in there. And if I want him to slow down when he's going into the curve, um, I can put that on there as well again and spin them. And then let's try that, put that down. Like I said, it's remarkable. It doesn't seem to be wanting to speed up for whatever reason, but you can see that the color changes there. He slowed down and let's see if he goes faster. We'll try one of the turbo ones to see if we can really get him to go fast. But it's remarkable how they just automatically follow, you know, the line so well. And let's see. Yeah, it doesn't want to seem to be speeding up. I haven't had an issue, of course, until I go to film the review with it learning the commands, but so far it doesn't seem to be wanting to speed up. I'll try one of the other ones in a second. And then the last thing you can do, which I really like, is these challenges where essentially there are like different levels from beginner all the way up to advanced where you pick um, one of them and it's missing some of the commands. Now it shows you what command it needs and you can then like plug in the command that you think and where it goes. So for example, right here, there's an X. If I let this go straight without plugging any commands in here, I'm gonna try one of the other ones right now um, and see which way it goes. It's gonna turn because it doesn't know to go straight to the finish. The goal of these challenges is to get it from the start to the finish. I have this thing that says straight, and if I, obviously if I place it right there and then place this down, it's gonna go straight like so. And now it gets to the finish. So that's what allows you to like really get fun stuff in it. I'm gonna draw just one more just to make sure that you know I can get that fast thing going again. I don't know why, like I said, it wasn't wanting to speed up. But let's try that and see if maybe it was just that one not working properly. Nah, it's still not going all that fast for whatever reason. But like I said, still fun no matter what. Um, whether you use the app or whether you use paper, the Ozobots are fun for like people of all ages. I let my nine-year-old get in there and draw different stuff with it. She had a lot of fun drawing them around. Um, they're a joy to use, whether you're young or old. iPad or paper, it really makes no difference. Um, if you want to learn more about these, visit the link I'll have in the video description. You can also learn more about them by checking out my full review of them over on runaroundtech.com. That link will be down there as well. As always, if you have any questions about this or anything else, be sure to drop me a line down below. Otherwise, have a great day.